Hello there, my very good friends. On today's wrestling news, the Kenny Omega Brian Danielson dream match has been booked. Cody Rhodes returns on last night's episode of AEW Dynamite, and he didn't come alone. Adam Cole has commented on reports that WWE wanted to turn him into a manager. And the latest update on Candice LeRae's contract situation with WWE. I'm Adam Wilborn. And I'm Andy Murray. And this is the news. Kenny Omega, Brian Danielson. Oh. They've gone and booked it, haven't they, though? lunatics it's going down next week uh, I almost said Madison Square Garden but that would be totally wrong uh, Dynamite Grand Slam in Arthur Ashe Stadium New York City the big match the uh, probably top of most people's dream match list when, yeah. when, when Danielson came in to AEW it's happening it's a non-title match mm. uh, there was a big hot in-ring segment between these guys last night Don Callis was there being a carny POS as usual got very heated but it all boiled down to Brian Danielson saying I want to see if you're as good as you say you are man let's go one on one kind of took a few shots at Kenny Omega's pride everything else Omega agreed non-title match Arthur Ashe Stadium there you go it's a good way to to deliver the match big match for the big show without having to mess with the rankings and go why is this guy getting a title shot mm. straight away so there you go um, but uh, a bunch of stuff got announced last night a bunch oh. of big matches and we're just going to run through some not everything because the video will be 30 minutes long <laughs> but some of the stuff that we'll was talk about it in the AEW Dynamite review there you go whatever, wherever you get your podcast from what culture wrestling you've got like 5 hours or whatever you can, you can pop it off uh other stuff announced for next week in Arthur Ashe Stadium and Dynamite Ruby Soho versus Britt Baker for the women's title FTR versus Darby Allin and Sting yes. it's wild uh, John Moxley and Eddie Kingston versus Minoru Suzuki and Lance Archer a couple of other ones as well for Rampage this week you're getting Miro versus Fuego Del Sol in a title versus car match title versus truck yeah okay uh, as a tag team title match as well Lucha Brothers versus uh, my boys the Butcher and the Blades and uh, for next week on Grand Slam Rampage Slam Tennis yeah my name's Andy Murray uh, CM Punk versus Powerhouse Hobbs is a thing. Uh, what, what's going on? Cole and the Bucks teaming up. Yeah, what? Uh, uh, there's, there's more as well on this list, but Jesus, Fenton, this is ridiculous. In the words of some woman in that Ferrero Rocher advert, Ambassador, you are spoiling <laughs> us. <laughs> uh, I mean, I, like you say, I, there's not really a lot I can say here. I just sort of sit here and drink in the fact that we're getting all these mint matches very soon yeah wrestling's pretty good it's not out. like we gotta wait you know two months for the next pay-per-view or whatever like you say it's happening next week or even in some cases at the end of this week like it's just nice to be teased you know with something yeah. and then it actually be nice. delivered gratification is good it turns out and uh, being happy is also good yeah. so when two things are good, it's double good, which is good squared, which means it's good multiplied by good. Indeed. Hot take this. I'm not sure anyone else has actually said this, so get ready, everyone. It's a good time to be a wrestling fan. Hey, you tweet so. that out, you'll get about 12,000 likes. Right, hey. so hey, you slash Cesaro's a good wrestler as well. Did you so. know? Brian Danielson. <laughs> it's not bad. Right. Anyway, let's talk Cody Rhodes. He is back. He returned on last night's episode of AEW Dynamite. To save Rosario Dawson? Basically what happened is Malachi, Malachi Black made his epic entrance, came out, was storming around the ring, cutting a promo, and then he spotted actress Rosario Dawson, star of Men in Black 2. <laughs> Stop the things, I don't know why that one popped into my head, but still, Men in Black, one of the best film franchises of all time. Fight me, it's better than Lord of the Rings. Oh, they are um, going to fight you. What was I saying? Oh yeah, Malachi Black confronted her because she was wearing the Nightmare Family gear, basically, and that was infuriating. So he came down, confronted her, Cody Rose, Returned through the crowd that distracted Malachi Black. Rosario Dawson jumped on Malachi Black's back and started choking <laughs> him out. In the end, uh, it was Black and Rhodes brawling through the crowd. There's even footage on like Squared Circle and social media of them brawling all the way through that yeah. arena. And they are going to fight on next week's episode of Grand Slam Dynamite as well. Great to see him back. You know, Rosario Dawson, obviously, the connection with the Go Big Show as well. We knew that when he was retiring, that was the reason he was actually going away yeah. for a bit. But it's always nice to have him back. Intrigue and see what they do next with him because a bit of a mixed crowd reaction yeah. that he got the last few times. It's, go it's going that way for sure. Um, I wasn't that into this whole deal. I don't know. It didn't really connect to the level I think maybe they had planned. And uh, I've spoken about the retirement angle in the past. It's like, just do an injury, mm. brother. Just like, oh, my knee's hurt. I've got to go away for six days. Something like that would have been a bit more simple. A bit less melodramatic, yeah. I think. Um, but look, if the end result is Malachi Black going over, like emphatically, preferably, because if you want to send him off the card, 
I think that's a good tip. And it's so nice for 2.0, who obviously main event the draws. Of the show, so drawing people the to draws. the show, you know, to pass that, you know, niceness around, to, to get those eyes on some up and comers like your Cody Rhodes, like your Adam Coles, you know, 2.0, like they're, they're generous. They're, they're generous with this because they are that damn good. Yeah, they're giving, and now they run NXT as well. If yes, need apparently. Is anything to go by? I think they bought it out, actually. Hey, uh, you want me to do my Tony D'Angelo <laughs> impression or no? Hey, <laughs> schmucks. Honestly, <laughs> he's won the war, ladies and gentlemen. It's over. NXT is now a waste management uh, organization. <laughs> anyway, actually, the show. Was More like... on Brand Breaker in a bit. Yeah. actually. <laughs> NXT 2.0 is great. Yeah. Uh, let's get, move over. Adam Cole, what's he saying? Remember last week we sat here and we talked about that mental plan, uh, the, that pitch that was going around to turn him into Keith Lee's manager, and it was oh. like a Leo Rush, Bobby Lashley thing, and maybe they change his name because Michael Cole exists. Adam Cole. <laughs> Adam Boom. Adam Boom. Gee whiz. That idea never made it to Adam Cole. So to be fair, right, Dave Meltzer made the original report on Wrestling Observer Radio, uh, ran through this whole situation. He did say at the time that he didn't know if it had actually been taken to Cole. It was something he'd heard was the idea of Bruce or Vince from different sources. Um, so what Cole has said here is kind of in line with that. Yeah. Um, he's speaking to TV Insider, he has said the following. I personally never heard of anything regarding that. I touched base a little bit on how my meeting with Vince went really well. We talked for about 30 minutes, he had a lot of complimentary things to say. Uh, as far as hearing that specific thing, that was not something I heard about. So it sounds very much like something that was buzzing around in the background, but never made it to Cole, which is Thank probably Christ. for the best. Because the thing about Adam Cole is like, he's clearly like the nicest guy in the world. He's really polite, everything else. If it had made it to him and he'd been pitched this, he'd have probably been really nice about it in the mm. interview anyway. He'd have cushioned the blow by saying, ooh, no. Yeah, he was like, he, he wouldn't sit there and go, it's the worst idea I've ever heard, right? Yes. Like, yeah. I, it doesn't stop it being a dumb idea. Yeah, like, it's the worst the idea. The fact that he didn't hear it didn't stop the fact that he's being passed around so much that it got out to outlets and Vince or Bruce's name was attached to it right up until the point basically someone went, what are you going to pitch to Adam Cole? What? Don't say that, just offer him money and Twitch stuff, please. That's the reason he's probably going to save anything. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like I said, still a dumb idea. Yeah. And the fact that even if even if this report was false, which it isn't, it's just it never got to Adam Cole. Even if this report was false, the fact that we all went, yeah, that sounds like something WWE would do, I think speaks more volumes than anything. Absolutely. Uh, right, let's conclude by talking about Candice LeRae and her contract situation. You may have heard over the last few days uh, about Johnny Gargano and where he is. His contract runs out at the beginning of December, the 3rd of December, in fact, as was referred, reported earlier on this week. Uh, and per Fightful Select, no crap, just sap, Sean Ross Sapp of Fightful Select, who also reported the Gargano story. Candice LeRae's contract is a little bit different. It runs until some point in 2022. We haven't got exact details on that, but basically that means if Johnny Gargano chooses to leave, Candice LeRae is still going to be in NXT 2.0 for the time being. Although I suppose she is kind of quite busy because she's giving birth in yeah. February. No word on the contract <laughs> status of the baby as of yet. Whether or not it's that's been decided to be all elite, we'll never know. Or we will. We just have to wait till 2022. But yes, it's a bit of a bit of a ditch, different situation yeah. in the Gargano household, basically. Yeah, absolutely. Um, it it, it kind of makes sense, doesn't it? I mean. Gaga, Johnny signed in 2016, 17? Yes, One of those years. One of them. Professional. Uh, and Candice didn't sign her contract until January 2018. So it's reasonable to think that they might not line up and everything else. Uh, although you just imagine at least one of those has signed an extension in that time. But, you know, that's me speculating. Um, yeah, very interesting to follow the flow of talent to and by from wrestling companies in the moment. And we'll see what happens if these people hit the agency. Yes, let us know where you think they should end up or whether they should stick around in NXT in the comments and we'll move on to your Twitter questions at what culture WWE uh, first question today comes from Mikkel Dennison Mikkel Michael apologies uh, Mr. Dennison says uh, you think we could ever get to the point where Triple H is tired of being undermined by Vince and leaves for AW Impact ROH etc <laughs> or maybe starting his own small company or something where he can just run things the way he goddamn wants oh I Hmm. I've kind of gone back and forth on this a little bit, but I think at the end of the day, he might have frustrations here and there, but he's still got a pretty good gig in WWE, mm. right? He's on the board, he's an executive, he's everything else, he's this, he's that. Yes, he has made enough money to live on for the rest of his life, presumably, and everything else, and maybe he does have more of a creative itch, but 
I don't know, Triple H leaving WWE is not something I ever see. Unless, like, Vince steps away someday, Nick Khan somehow ends up in power and goes, hey, Triple H, see you later. Yeah. Um, but I, I don't know. I don't see it. I can see him being very frustrated, understandably. Yeah. But, like you say, I don't see it ever getting to the point. Like, he's a he's a one-company man. He's yeah. only ever worked for WWF oh, from the time he worked for Terror Rising. Yeah. Terror yeah, of course. <laughs> um, and do you think Brian Danielson's Thanksgiving dinner is going to be awkward with big Johnny Ace there? Imagine that. Oh. Steph, I'm, do you know what? I've been a bit of a, a, bit of a dicky tummy. Uh, I'm not going to come around to your dad's house <laughs> considering I've left the start of my own bloody company uh, I've also just decided we here at What Culture will be acknowledging Thanksgiving so we won't be here that day because me and him will be eating lots of turkey getting turked and worked okay second question today comes from Eric Sommers who say does the, does the appearance of Braun Breaker aka Rex <laughs> Steiner of course guarantee Braun Strowman won't be back in WWE uh, they'll have to change his name, won't they? Because like, you can't have two people with the same I'm name. I'm so confused. It'll be Rex Strowman. That's oh. what it'll be. Uh, I don't think so. What I do you think, think of Bron so. Breaker, by the way? He was awesome. He was so awesome. I thought he he's got like three. this really weird energy in the segments where he's like really smiley, but like he's you can tell he wants to snap something. Yeah. It's like he's, I said this on Twitter, but it's like he's replaced all the blood in his body with like cheap instant coffee. Yeah. Because he's just wired constantly. He's like, hey, I'm Bron Breaker. All right, all right, Tommaso Ciampa. I'm going to kill you one day. <laughs> Um, and the match with LA Knight was really good fun. Yeah, I loved it. And um, the name sucks. It, yeah. It's really oh, bad. Oh. Rex Steiner is really good, so maybe they'll maybe they'll maybe they'll rethink it. But uh, yeah, I love the guy. I, think he's I awesome. really enjoyed NXT this week. It was like, so much fun. Wasn't wedding, it? which for once didn't well, it yeah. did have hitches. I mean, a man showcased the fact he had an axe and was willing to murder all the people that were there. But generally, they got married. That was lovely. Really enjoyed that. Tommy Chomp as your new NXT champion. D'Angelo. Tommy D'Angelo. Tommy D'Angelo. Bloody brand breaker, and I mean, uh, we have to move on. But oh my god, the, the Creed brothers, the Creed brothers! Oh my days, Creed brothers, baby! Just throw me around like an empty tracksuit. In the words of our very own Adam <laughs> Nicholas, Cammy Donahue gives us our final question of the day. Cammy says, uh, "Do you think? Do you guys think that Vince taking over NXT might actually help when people get called up to Raw and SmackDown, since he likely won't be making massive changes to their characters from what they're doing in NXT under him?" I think it'll make a smoother transition. Yeah, like the thing, the problem was before you had the NXT, the super indie, great matches, all this stuff, like all the things like us dorks like. Uh, and then when they get to the Vince, Vince doesn't like that stuff. He doesn't want these smaller, older guys who can have five star whatever matches. Um, so there was a clear disconnect. I think that this will put people in better steading for sure, because Vince will, you know, ensure that these folk- Oh yeah, he'll are... ruin them before they get started. Oh yeah, yeah, there you go. Um, <laughs> but like, I don't think it'll make for a better product. Don't get me wrong, like long term, but I do think it'll make for a smoother transition, even though I think he was wrong with his attitudes towards certain people who've been called up. Absolutely, yeah. I just think they're just gonna be, you know, be made in his image, there. yeah, made his yeah. image in developmental rather than, oh, what, I, what you meant to be? No, but I can already see it now. I know we've pitched before Hook being involved in WrestleMania, <laughs> but I picture this, WrestleMania 40, I said this to Hamper and he loved it. Someone's on has got to be gone. Von Wagner versus Braun Breaker, brother. <laughs> you could end up with Br Breaker. <laughs> <laughs> Let's conclude with today's and <laughs> finally, and the lady that Adam Cleary used in the excellent chat of line. It's Paige, isn't it? To Paige, who simply tweeted the word January last night. Contract season, baby. Oh, is that what it was? I thought it was her favourite month. <laughs> What's your favourite month? Uh, December, because Christmas is great. Oh, Christmas party. Yeah. That's not long away, That's is it? That's not long away at all. Woo! I would say October, because my birthday's in October, but Halloween's in October, and Halloween's rubbish. Spoopy. So. It's spoopy, Yeah, Halloween. spoopy. Shut up, you dorks. <laughs> uh, pumpkin spice lies. One of many things this guy's got muted on, on, yeah, on Twitter. Yeah, spoopy is gone. Spoop, spoop. Any, any spoop. Like the <laughs> way, I've got the word spoon muted, just in case <laughs> pumpkin pie, spice lattes taste like dirty feet. Go on. Fall is rubbish. Go on. Summer is better. Fight me, you weird, spoopy humans. Yeah. <laughs> We're going to have fun in the comments today. Yes, Go August, are. I'll say, for my favourite month. Yeah, Let us know your favourite month. This is going to be so random for people who click on and go like, 
at 10 minutes into the news saying, why is everyone commenting their favourite month in the <laughs> I would really like April. <laughs> oh, we'll, we'll do it and maybe we'll do a poll on Twitter and we can be asked. <laughs> uh, let us know your thoughts on everything we've discussed though in the comment section below. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe and subscribe to What Cool Dressing on either iTunes, Spotify, wherever you get your podcasts from for daily wrestling podcasts. Myself and the Daily Boys, as I said, sitting down to review AEW Dynamite a little bit later on today. Plus, you can let us know your thoughts, questions, favourite months on Twitter <laughs> at What Culture WWE. Watch there, follow both of us. You can follow Andy Murray at at Andy H Murray the H today stands for hey if you were thinking of being smart and sliding into my mentions with a variation on spooey with different letters or whatever please do that because it'll give me more things to mute shouting <laughs> into the void <laughs> spooky spoop Follow me on Twitter at Adam Wilborn. Follow us all at What Culture WWE. But now, my thanks to Andy Murray. Thank you for joining us. And wait, we'll see you soon. Boopy. ACAST powers some of the world's best podcasts. Here's a show we recommend Hey, everyone. Cameron Abadi here, deputy editor at Foreign Policy. So, when I think about economics podcasts, the words fun or exciting don't really come to mind. And then I started working with Adam Tooze. Readers of FP know Adam as an economic historian and a popular author, but he's more than that. In some ways, he's an encyclopedia about everything. How a big multinational like Ford or GM operates has a huge impact. On By 2018, life expectancy was 78 and a half. Where we Historically unprecedented increase in poverty. On each episode of Ones and Twos, Adam Twos and I will unpack several data points. I'm pretty sure you won't look at the world the same way. A-cast, 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 A-cast recommends. recommends.